The IIT Bombay campus, spread over about 566 acres, has had a large portion under the tree's green cover since 1958. These trees add to the beauty of the campus and provide shade, flowers and fruits to the residents. As per the 2009 Biodiversity Survey of the campus, about 9,430 trees belonging to 150 species were surveyed, making it one of the greenest and biodiverse campuses. However, most of these trees shed leaves in all the seasons, adding to the garden waste. The maintenance and management of trees inside the campus is done collectively by the Horticulture Department and the Public Health Office. Approximately 1 to 2 tons of garden waste is generated every day inside the campus. Some portion of the garden waste is used for composting, but a majority of it is discarded near the pipeline behind the campus. Though the discarding is done carefully at appropriate locations, it has resulted in various problems such as fires, foul smell, increased snakes presence and the insect menace. The garden waste of 2 tons per day indicates nearly 730 tons waste in a year. Disposal of this waste is a huge challenge. There are various technological options to manage this waste. Composting is one such option. Though it is less intensive, it requires more space and has a long waiting period. For example, windrow composting will require a 2500 square meter area to biocompost the garden waste of one year. This area is roughly equivalent to two swimming pools of IIT Bombay. It will also need equipment such as the JCB for turning and manpower to manage the windrow composting. Gasification, on the other hand, can be a sustainable solution to manage garden waste at the IIT Bombay campus as it will reduce the consumption of LPG at the community level cooking places such as hostel canteens and messes. The biomass energy is carbon neutral unlike fossil fuels as it does not add any extra carbon to the atmosphere. Tata Center for Technology and Design has been working on an alternative solution not only to manage garden waste but also to utilize the biomass to generate thermal energy through pelletization and gasification. The gasifier needs pellets as feed. The major steps involved are waste collection, separation of the soil, drying if required and shredding and finally pelletization to provide feed for the gasifier. This is the way it works. The public health office staff collects the biomass and supplies it to the processing site. For the collection of biomass, Tata Center has created a database based on GIS mapping to provide quantitative and qualitative inputs from the trees inside the campus based on their location density and type. This helps in collecting areas for leaves collection and biomass collection specifically for the gasification purpose. Chemical characterization of different types of leaves also enable the use of the right type of biomass. This is followed by soil separation, drying, shredding of garden waste and pelletization. Pellets can be sold in the market as green fuel or can be used in a gasifier to generate cooking gas. Let's see what happens in gasification. The first stage is drying. Here the moisture of the biomass is removed. Pyrolysis happens in the second stage where volatile gases are released from the biomass due to the action of heat. In the third stage, oxidation occurs. The volatile gases and char coming from pyrolysis zone are burnt to form 
CO2 and H2O. Gasification is the final stage. Unused hot char from the pyrolysis zone reacts with the CO2 and H2O to remove the oxygen and forms combustible gases CO and H2. Biomass is now converted into a friendly fuel known as producer gas. About 70% of biomass energy is converted into gaseous form. The Terry gasifier designed for wood as the feedstock is the most popular gasifier in the market used for community cooking. However, trying the garden waste pellets on the Terry gasifier earlier had resulted in a large amount of clinker being formed due to the high ash content in the feed. A new gasifier for garden waste had to be designed. The Terry gasifier had air supply from two nozzles in the oxidation zone. The temperatures near the nozzles would rise very high and if the ash content in the feedstock was high, it melted and flowed to a cooler area to solidify and then form clinker. This clinker would start conglomerating inside the gasifier if not removed immediately. Based on this study on the Terry gasifier, Tata Center has conceptualized and got a new modified gasifier fabricated. It has multiple air inlets near the drying zone and the oxidation zone to provide better heat and mass distribution. Due to this, the local temperature at any point will not be high enough to melt the ash and form clinker. The new gasifier has a vertically adjustable grate that could change the gasification zone length making it suitable for multiple feeds. An additional clinker removal window is provided to easily remove the clinker if formed in any specific case. The facility for both manual and mechanized grate movement is provided in the new gasifier. The water seal tank for ash and residue collection is also modified to make it user friendly. This gasifier has been tested for its performance in the laboratory and is found to operate with minimal clinker. The cooking operation has also been carried out for a couple of weeks on this gasifier and the positive feedback obtained from the professional cook has motivated the next steps of installing it in hostel messes and canteens before rolling the gasifier out for dissemination. The gasifier is an appropriate technology to deal with the garden waste or the biomass which become sources of alternative fuels and it provides a sustainable energy solution. Through gasification around 60 kilograms of pellets produce energy equivalent to one LPG cylinder that is 14.2 kilograms of LPG. After the pellets have been used as fuel, they provide ash and char residue which can be used as a soil quality enhancer. An experiment shows that plants grow much faster when this residue is added in soil. The growth is comparable with the growth when compost is added. Thus, the process of garden waste pelletization and gasification for community level cooking rightly serves as an end-to-end -end innovation addressing the issues of waste management and the need of alternative cooking fuels.